we need to be concerned about two plants that if bees go to, it could affect our customers and it could affect us if we eat the honey. Hey guys, David Burns here. I'm out here today among some trees that I was uh, called by Sherry to examine. She said, oh no, there's a swarm in a tree. So we got in the golf cart. We ran down here really quickly. Like, I got to catch this swarm. I thought I was doing good swarm control. What's going on here? I couldn't find the swarm, but the tree was like, take a look at this. So Sherry came and got me and said, David, there's a swarm in a tree. And I was like, oh, I've done so well at swarm control. So we went down, we got to this tree. And I hear, I hear bees, just like she said. But if you notice, on these flowers, bees are all over this tree. And guess what they're on? These are flowers of poison ivy. This tree has a, a large poison ivy vine that goes up there. And the bees are getting the nectar from the poison ivy. Now, this brings up a good question. Is it possible that you can get poison ivy from eating honey that's from a poison ivy plant. There are other plants too that we need to take a look at. Is it true that some honey you eat can make you go crazy or make you sick? And does this poison ivy uh, nectar actually cause you to have poison ivy? Don't touch it, Sherry. You're really close. I'm not touching it. It will light you up. You're touching it with your hands. Well, David, I love this all the time. You touch it with your hand, you're going to be so mad at yourself. Oh my gosh, it's a poison ivy vine that is in full bloom. Poison ivy vines, they have flowers, they produce nectar, and bees love the nectar from a poison ivy plant. Now, is that going to affect you? Is that going to affect your customers? If your customers buy your honey or you eat your own honey that the bees have been pulling off this poison ivy plant, are you going to break out in a, a rash from the poison ivy plant? Well, I did my research on it, and let me put it to you this way. The poison ivy oil is found mostly in the leaves. And so in the nectar, when the bees gather that nectar, that nectar is not as potent as the leaves from my understanding. Plus, when the bees gather the nectar, they take it through a process, uh, not, not the best word, but they, they actually take it through uh, a process of adding their own enzymes to it. They're breaking it down. They're drying it out. They're adding other nectar from other plants to it. So if there are traces of that particular poison ivy oil that our skin reacts to, it is very, very diluted. And through the process of the enzymes being added to it, I doubt if it would have hardly any effect at all. But the rule of thumb to remember, and my advice to you is, that if you're highly sensitive to poison ivy, avoid eating honey from the poison ivy plant. Well, now you're gonna say that's impossible, David. That's, it is impossible to know, right? You can buy honey from a beekeeper, and for all you know, his bees did go to poison ivy vines when they were in full bloom. You don't know that, right? You can buy honey at the store. That honey could have been gathered partially from some of the poison ivy plant. Now, at the same time they're on these plants, poison ivy vine, they're on other plants. They're on clover, other things in bloom. And again, that's all getting diluted. So from my reading, and it's my opinion too, that by time we consume the honey, if some of the nectar did come from the poison ivy plant, really not gonna affect us. But there's another plant that we really need to stay away from. Let me tell you about that one. But let me, let me tell you a little bit more about poison ivy while we're talking about it. I have never been highly sensitive to poison ivy. I've handled it. I, I know about, you know, if you accidentally touch poison ivy, that oil can be washed off with some Dawn soap if you wash it off like you would be washing grease off of your, don't just do a quick wash. You gotta really get that oil off of you before it bites into your skin and causes a rash. Um, but poison ivy can be something that is horrible. I'm standing pretty close to it now. And I'm careful not to touch it. I respect poison ivy a lot. But poison ivy is the leaves of three, let it be. Now, look at this, right next to me here. Uh, this sometimes is mistaken. Uh, my dad taught me to really know trees. You see that leaf right there? Do you know what that leaf is? This leaf, it's not a leaf of three. Uh, poison ivy, I'll show you in just a minute. But this is actually a sassafras tree. 
And by the way, we should not eat the roots or make sassafras tea. It's been declared kind of toxic. It can cause cancer, they say. But shoot, I've made a lot of sassafras tea in my day when I was younger. <laughs> Ooh. But anyway, that's a sassafras leaf. And look at what poison ivy looks like. Now, you can see that the flowers here have since sort of dried up. There's not much, uh, there's no bees working this today at all. They're done. They worked it heavily when it was in a full bloom, but now the flower itself is drying out. But you can see leaves of three, let it be. So I've learned that, and most people that are uh, sensitive to poison ivy know what the three leaves look like. So you just kind of see a plant and you see one, two, three, like right up here. Look at that. One, two, three. And there's all the flowers that bees were on uh, just a few days ago. So it's a big vine and I need to come out here and cut it down, but ooh, <laughs> can't bring myself to get into poison ivy and start messing with it. It's just uh, something I'm not going to do. Now, let me tell you about another plant that is more toxic to the honey than poison ivy. The other plant that we need to be concerned about is that of the rhododendron. Yeah, rhododendron, mad honey, have you heard about that? There's rhododendron plants around here. I think we've actually had some in our yard before, but if you have a high concentration of rhododendron plants, bushes, or those small trees, then if bees are really hitting that hard, that's honey that you do want to avoid. Now, how do we deal with this? Because just like poison ivy, we can't tell our bees not to go to poison ivy. We can't tell our bees not to go to rhododendrons. But here is what I've found over my many years of researching it and talking to botanists about it. They say that for the most part, unless you live in an area where there's a massive amount of rhododendron plants, it's really not gonna be an issue because the bees are diluting that rhododendron nectar down with a whole bunch of other nectar from other plant sources at the time. So the best rule of thumb is if you're uh, selling honey, if you're making a lot of honey, know the source of where your bees are going. What is the main bulk of your honey coming from? You don't want the main bulk of your honey coming from rhododendron plants. It can affect the nervous system. It can really be, mm, it can make people sick and die. So it's to be respected. If you've never heard of that, sorry to break the bad news to you. Um, but the, for the most part, like where I live here, I've not worried about it because there's just not that many plants of rhododendron. And so my all the bees go out on clover, they go out on poison ivy, they gather nectar from other sources, and that little bit of rhododendron nectar that may come in there, again, it's processed down through enzymes that the bees add to it, dry it down, and dilute it with other honeys. It's not an issue at all, not gonna be a big deal. But if you're, again, someone that is in an area of high concentration, a high volume of these plants all around you, and you see your bees going crazy bringing it in, you might want to move your bees some other place. Get them away from the rhododendron area. Or if you have rhododendron plants, you see your bees on it. Am I touching poison ivy? No. <laughs> and you may want to just try to figure out how do I get my bees uh, not to gather so much rhododendron. I have so fallen in love with a particular hive. I, I didn't think I would. I, I was hoping I could always go through my life as a Langstroth guy. But to be honest with you, I've really fallen in love. Well, it was love at first sight. I haven't even had this hive that long and I'm in love with it already. For the purpose of saving my back. Oh my gosh. I want to tell you, and if you didn't see my video yet, of me setting up a horizontal hive. You got to check this out. Now, it's not a Layens hive. A Layens hive is a horizontal hive, but the frames are 13 inches wide and 16 inches deep. This is a horizontal hive that is um, a Langstroth type frame. And so that's comfortable for me right now because I, I have a lot of those frames. But I may work my way over to a Layens hive and go 13, 16 on the frame because I understand that longer depth of the frame can really help bees a lot. But anyway, I want you to check out this video and it may be a hive that you may want to fall in love with too. Uh, check it out of me setting up my horizontal hive. I'll see you guys over here.